Good morning, everyone. I don't know what happened to the connection, but I'm back on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all of you here, too, as well. And uh, I'm going to talk about where's your faith? How much faith do you really have? How far would you be willing to show everyone that you have that faith? And the question's here. It says, what's caused your suffering and fear? Well, every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of Light, so it's not him, it's not God, it's Satan. He wants to disprove that God can work in your life. To what or whom have you turned for help in healing? Jesus Christ is the master healer. I can't think of anyone better that I could even point to as master healer as he was. Even though he gave his disciples the ability to heal in his name. And he made that plain, in his name. And how can you cling to Jesus today? If you have a prayer request upon your heart today, let it be known to God. Either by an uplifted hand or you just say it silently within your heart. That's either way he knows your heart. And he knows your prayers. And he does answer them. It may take time. Sometimes it does. I can attest to the fact that I've been praying for something for over 30 years and it's finally happened. I was faithful in believing that his time is his time. His time is right. My timing is never right. <laughs> never, ever right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and bring our concerns to him right now. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we come before thee in prayer. There are many out there that need our prayers right now. And I pray, dear Lord, that you answer each and every call to prayer as you see fit. Dear Lord, I ask you right now to remember all these that are on my list today. The conflict in the Middle East is getting worse by the day, by the day, by the day, and by the day. You hear reports of widespread violence and destruction, personal tragedy, kidnapping. All those things are happening over in the Middle East. I pray, dear Lord, you have your hand upon those that are affected in that area. I pray for the families of the victims that have lost their lives on both sides. I pray that they come to an agreement, a peaceful agreement they can live with and abide by. I pray for Zero and his family. He's still, uh, Zero himself is still under uh, under the weather, and I just pray, dear Lord, you have your hand upon him today and just give him that special touch as only you can do. Aruba Dive Girl's daughter. I ask you to be with her. Continue prayers for Carol Little. As far as I know, she's out of the hospital now, but I pray, dear Lord, nonetheless, that you uh, watch over her. Uh, Carmen, with your back situation, can you continue prayers for her? And uh, I also pray that uh, the accident doesn't cost them too much that they had that she had with a deer. She was not affected by it, thank the Lord as far as contusions or scrapes or bruises or anything like that. But the car is messed up. So pray, I pray that you be both with Gary and with Carmen right now. Uh, my brother, Kerry, still recovering from his gallbladder surgery, minty cactus as well. Shirlene is slim with their health concerns as well as her mom being in hospital, or her mom being in hospital, pardon me. For those who are going through cancer treatments, I think of Gary's neighbor, Eric, and Gary's relative in Arkansas, Jack and Sally, and Zero's uncle, Chuck, and anyone else that's going through that at this time. I pray, dear Lord, also for my sister-in-law, Maggie. Her, her husband is going to be facing surgery on the 16th. I pray, dear Lord, that not only is he prepared, but that you help them to endure what they will have to go through as far as physical therapy and the healing process. I also lift up 
my wife, Tony. Dear Lord, you know what's going on with her. I won't go into all the details in prayer, but you know what's happening. Have your hand upon her today and give her peace, comfort, and rest. For my son and daughter with their health concerns and their unspoken request, dear Lord, have your hand upon them. Is whatever they're going through right now, may they be blessed by the Lord. My sister Linda, who now is in the nursing home in Mount Charles, I pray, dear Lord, that you have your hand upon her, as well as giving wisdom to her children to do the right thing by their mother. I pray also, dear Lord, for my friend Clyde Vaughn with an unspoken request. And for all of those that are on social media, I got a little taste of that last night. The drama and the bickering and the arguing and the fighting between people has got to stop. We have to be a united people if we're going to survive. It doesn't matter what your political position is. I just pray, dear Lord, that we, you know, pray for each other and love one another. We are the, the race we are is the human race that needs to be saved. We have a lot of lost people out there don't know don't, don't know Christ as their personal Savior. Let that de- happen right now that somebody come forward and receive Christ today. For in Jesus' name we do pray. And all of God's people said, mm-hmm. amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter number 9, verses 18 through 22. Chapter number 9. Verses 18 through 22. And again, I'm going to see if there's anybody online. (laughs) Hopefully there is. Sorry about the delay. The computer told me that we had no internet. (laughs) That's what it said. So I had to reboot. I'm glad you're all on. I'm glad you're patient to at least wait. And yes, yes, we should, Carrie. Absolutely. That's why I said both sides. Both sides need to be, you know, get uh, just get this conflict stopped and just go and do what needs to be done. Get peace in the region. I don't think war does any good for anybody, really. Well, when he spake these things unto them, now let me let me set this up before I get started. There was a woman that was going through a blood disorder. And she was having an issue of blood for 12 years. Now think about that. You women out there know what that's like. She was going through it for 12 years. But listen to the story. This will really make you feel good about faith. When he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter even now is dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall love. Well, that's undying faith there. I mean, right there, that first verse just grabbed me this morning. I was going to talk about something else, but that really grabbed me. I says, I got to talk about this. It's like the Lord saying, no, no, the other one's okay, but this is better. I'm glad I listened to the Lord. (laughs) I'd be lost without him. Really, I would. But that told me something. The man came to Jesus knowing that he could heal that daughter of his and had that much faith. And Jesus arose, followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Again, faith, undying faith, in believing that Jesus Christ could heal her. I had that same faith when I went into surgery for my back. I gave it all to him, and here I am, standing walking and talking to you now. How could I do that without him? Yes, the surgeon did do the number on me, but she was educated so well. She did a great job. A great job. The healing part 
came from the Lord. I, 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 I'm even remarkable at the progress I had because the very first day I got out of bed after surgery, they told me just to walk a little ways. I walked 60 feet. 60 feet, and I thought, wow, I could go around the block if I really wanted to do it. But they won't let me. They said, yeah, you got to go all the way back. you got to remember, you got this far, now you got to go all the way back, right? I made it. The nurses were astonished. You must have a lot of intestinal fortitude. I said, you have no idea who's doing this to me. Jesus. When I bent my toes, I cried. Mm -hmm. I still cry about that today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I could have been I could have been in a wheelchair. I would have blessed, I would have been blessed even if I've been in a wheelchair. I hope this blesses you today. You gotta understand something about faith. You gotta let self go. You kind of let self go and say, trust him. Trust in what he does for you. That's why I cling on to that verse. I say it almost every time I'm on because I believe it so much into my soul when I read this verse from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the, i got to memorize. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. That's what it says. Look it up and read it. It's right there. And I said, wow. When I looked at that verse and I actually got the full meaning of it, then I understood what faith was. I had faith, but I didn't have enough faith. When I came out of surgery, I had all the faith in the world, and I was telling everybody, look, everybody, I'm a walking miracle today because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He healed me from my affliction and made me whole. Don't ever doubt what Jesus can do. He can do amazing things. This is why I admire this woman who touched his garment. And part of that text right there, it talked about who touched me. Jesus said, who touched me? I felt something go away from me. And when he found out who the woman was, he, he said, your faith has healed you. That's why I admire her. Not only moved through the crowd in her weakened state, but she also showed faith in venturing out to approach him. She had good reason to be afraid. Jewish law defined her as unclean, and by exposing others to her uncleanliness, she could face serious consequences, and that was true back then. If you look at uh, Leviticus uh, 15, 25 through 27, it talks specifically about an unclean person being away from them for a period of time until they were clean, and the priest would look at them and say they were clean and could come back into the population. That was a law. But the thought of, if only I could touch his, the cloth of his, the hem of his garment, got her going, got her faith going, if I could only just touch his garment. The Greek word which is translated as touch in Matthew 9.21 is not mere touching, but has the stronger meaning of to hold on to or attach oneself. A woman tightly held on to Jesus. She believed he could heal her. Jesus saw in the midst of the crowd the desperate faith of one woman. When we too venture out in faith and cling to Christ, as the name of the message written by Karen Huang, to Christ in our need, he welcomes us and comes to our aid every single time we trust in him. And you've got to have undying faith to get that at all. If you doubt for, for a minute, he's like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed, tossed about in James. Let that man not expect to receive anything from the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. 
That's why faith has to be strong in the individual. When you can tell our story that comes from the Bible without fear of rejection or punishment, Jesus tells us today, cling to me. The account of this woman's suffering from bleeding for 12 years is told in all three synoptic gospels of Matthew, Matthew 9, Mark 5, and Luke 8. And I advise you to read those chapters in those areas. Matthew's telling of the briefest of the three, despite the differing details, one element shared by all three is the essence of Jesus. Words to this healed you. It is important to note that this faith wasn't simply the belief that Christ could heal her, although that belief is also stated in the, all three of these gospels. Her faith caused her to act and it propelled her through the crowd with intestinal fortitude beyond what human understanding can understand at all. The adrenaline and the intestinal fortitude of one person believing in that kind of faith can move mountains. That's absolutely true about faith. That's how strong faith is when you have it towards Jesus Christ. Her faith caused her to act, touched his garment, made her whole. He caused the blind to be able to see the lame to be able to walk, and the hearing impaired to be able to hear. Nothing is impossible for the Lord, not one thing. It's our doubt that we have in our souls that keeps us from the full glory of God's blessing. And he's wanting to do that for you today. Whether you believe or whether you don't, this is how Jesus talked about faith. Faith is demonstrated by what it does, not what it claims to believe. What it does. It does incredible stuff. It's hard to even fathom the, uh, to fathom in the mind, faith. How far can you take your faith? How far are you willing to believe are you willing to believe even to the point of death? Jesus did that. Jesus died to the point of death because he took the sins of the world upon himself. He knew that he was going to be sacrificed for the sins of man. Yet, to the end, even when Peter cut off the ear of the temple guard, he said, permit even this. And he healed and made the ear whole. Stopped the bleeding and healed it completely. What's to say that that palace guard turned over a new leaf in life and started to believe? The centurion that kneeled at the cross and said, Truly this is the son of the living God. We did a play years ago and I was a Roman soldier and I played the part of a Roman soldier <clears throat> and I was mad at the end keeper because the noise and the hollering and the lights and all that was keeping me up all night so I had to think how would I react if somebody kept me up all night this actually happened to us before I know Tony recalls this up in uh, Houghton when we stayed in that old hotel yeah how would you like to be in that situation where somebody keeps you up all night? So I'd start thinking, what was I like then? Just inflect that into the part. And the guy that I was that played the innkeeper, he actually jumped backwards because I went after him. And I told him, I says, I've been kept up all night for these lights and all this noise and singing and everything. And then he went to the tomb, or went to the not to the tomb, but to the uh, manger. And he saw the miracle of the birth of Christ. He saw the three kings. He knelt down. And I said a little speech, which I can't remember how I 
what I even said, but I, I think it was more along the lines of, could it be that this is the son of the living God? I believe it. Because the miracle of birth is one thing, but having Jesus in your heart is quite the other. If you put Jesus in your heart today, think what could happen to your life. Yeah, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. You're going to be proved. Don't expect an easy ride because it won't be. You're going to have people that will be totally against you. They will persecute you. They will ridicule you. I've had it all happen to me. Believe me, I have a thick skin when it comes to people criticizing me for what I believe in. But I always come back with, yeah, but at least I quote the scriptures. What's your excuse? And I quote the scriptures with the meaning behind what we were, whatever we're talking about. Because I'm not going to deviate from the scriptures in any way, shape, or form or take it out of context. It just will not happen. What I'm talking to you about today is having the undying faith in Jesus Christ to the point where there is no other standing out there but his. To me, there is no nobody else that can do what Jesus can do. There may be people that can show you miraculous signs, but Jesus even said to Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. It's better for those who have not seen me, but yet believe. That's faith in a nutshell. Where are you at in your faith today? If any out there, any of you out there online want to contact me, contact me at Jethro Levy Corner. Anybody here that wants to contact me or talk to me about this after I'm done today, I'm open to you. Because I can explain it so well because Christ is guiding my words today. And I thank you all for being here today. You needed to hear this. I needed to speak about it. And Christ made it very evident to me that one thing's nice to talk about, but this is more important. So let us go to the Lord in prayer as we conclude today's message. And remember, Christ hears all requests. If you are trusting and earnest in your soul. Father God, I want to thank you myself. And I'm sure everybody in this room wants to thank you for your love. God is love. And faith in him keeps us blessed. I don't have to afraid no more. I don't. You accept us and call us your child. We are your creation. It is not we that made ourselves. It is you who made us. And God, please, let us not ever stray from the faith or backslide we get out of fever. Because if we do that, we need to come back and ask for forgiveness. There may be some today that are in that condition right now. I ask your Lord that you forgive them. Set them on the road to righteousness that leads right straight to heaven's door. And as the door opens, the Lord says, Enter thy kind and faithful servant. There may be someone here today. It is not sure where they're going to spend eternity. They need to confess their sins. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, all his sin have come short of the glory of God. But it also says in 1 John 1, 1.9, he is just and able to forgive all sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we need to put our faith in you today, dear Lord. I pray today, dear Lord, do not only be with them, you be with everyone that is on our list that we talked about today. I didn't mention transportation today, but I'm going to mention it now. I see a trend going in transportation that I don't like. And that is the semi drivers being held up, over-regulated. I pray, dear Lord, today 
that you'd be with the semi driver, the airplane pilot and co-pilot, the cargo ship out there that's bringing goods into the country, and those that deliver every day tirelessly, Meals on Wheels, Uber, Uber drivers and local truck drivers delivering the goods that we need to sustain life with. Not only be with them, but be with the homeless out there that doesn't have a place to go. I pray that they find a place where they can get a hot meal and a bed to sleep in and somehow get out of their homeless state. I pray for the health and retail people out there, tirelessly working every day, alert and attentive to the jobs of which they perform. I've ran to a lot of wonderful cashiers in the last two days, dear Lord. I thank you for them. I thank you for all that bring the food there, for all that uh, has the grocery store stocked. I pray, dear Lord, for them profusely, the health profession that keeps everybody getting better and healing with each passing day. I thank you for the doctors and the nurses and all the technicians and surgeons that put us all back together again. I thank you, dear Lord, not only for our utility people, municipal people that work every day to keep us going, keep the lights on, keep the gas going, to heat our homes and the water, which we need to have for, to sustain life. Be with them today, dear Lord. Protect them from the dangers that are unseen, as well as our farmers and food producers, our, our fire police and our military to keep us safe. Be with them today, dear Lord. Protect them. I pray also, dear Lord, for our world, nation, state, local leaders. Have your hand upon them. Let them lean in a wise counsel of God to do that which they've been called to do by the elected by being elected by the people of this country. I pray, dear Lord, to listen not only to the people's, the will of the people, but the will of God, most, most importantly. And be with our churches out there right now. The pastors, the pastoral staff, the teachers, everyone who's involved in ministry, that people come into the church when the worship experience more enriched with God's word than when they first came in. I pray also, dear Lord, not only for the missionaries, but for the outreach ministries that do a wonderful job bringing the word of God wherever people are, whether they can get the church or not, or whether they're in a foreign country or not. I pray also, dear Lord, for world peace. Let us come, let the world come to peace by negotiating a an agreement that would be lasting for all of eternity, that we can shake hands and be friends. I pray for one soul to come forward this morning to receive Christ as their personal Savior. For in Jesus' name we do pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to hear from you on both sides, here and online. Online, contact me at Jethro Lee B. Corner, and I'll get right with you. Here, just grab me and say, I need to know Christ today. It would be great if we could have that happen. Then I could have a praise report on Tuesday after, Tuesday afternoon. Oh, and I'd like to talk about that. I love a praise report. If you got a praise, hey, put your hand up and let us know what Christ has done for you, and as well as you online. Have a wonderful day, everyone. God bless you all. Remember this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And let the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. A rapture could occur. We'll see each other in heaven. Otherwise, God willing, we'll be here next Sunday morning bringing you another message. For you online, I'm going to be on at 5 o'clock. So... With that said, remember this, that God loves you, and so do we. Have a wonderful and blessed day. I'm going to say, I see my mother yesterday.